Welcome back. This is KBC News Check. In case you just join us, I'm Ben Troenjoy. We are on our second hour after uh, talking about matters polls when it comes to the diaspora vote. Now we are shifting gears. We are discussing matters education and especially special education. Uh, let's know a little bit about um, special education and of course we have a new curriculum that of course uh, the CBC how has it been able to be integrated uh, in special education and to help me or to help us delve into that matter I'm joined by two gentlemen from the Kenya Institute of Special Education and on my extreme left we have John Muga who is the head of department at the uh, at the institution that is the visual impairment department and we have a lecturer from the same institution who is Gabriel Malala Okoto. Gentlemen, Karibuni Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you for making time. Asante. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, briefly, John, mm, yeah. uh, tell us something about the uh, Kenya Institute of Special Education. Uh, you have branches and some of the, some of, perhaps some of the, the, the programs offered. Yes. Thank you very much. KISE is, uh, stands for Kenya Institute of Special Education. It is a semi-autonomous government agency that is mandated to, to train teachers who will go ahead to train learners or to work with children with special needs. When I talk of special needs, I'm talking of a diversity of them. Mm -hmm. It's a wide spectrum. Mm -hmm. And uh, KISA trains those teachers. We are also mandated with uh, conducting research in special needs education. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we have quite a number of mandates mm -hmm. which are all focused on areas of special education and uh, without forgetting, mm -hmm. assessment. Mm -hmm. so all children need needs to be assessed. Yes. And since, as you mentioned, the CBC, mm -hmm. CBC requires that every learner who goes to school must undergo a functional and educational assessment. Mm -hmm. And the uh, KISE is the city of the National Assessment Center. We have branches across the counties, mm -hmm. but KISE, we have the national, the, 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 the foundation, the mother of all these assessments. Mm -hmm. Every child needs to be assessed for proper placement. Mm -hmm. Whether he has special needs or not, it is important. Uh, CBC requires that every learner is placed in that kind of a program that will benefit him and enable him to bring out his best. Indeed. Basically, that is... Uh, Gabriel, perhaps you can uh, pick it where uh, John has left on some of the, uh, the, the, the programs that are offered there and what does it take for someone to join the institution? Because, of course, at the end of the day, they are going to be tending to children with special needs and there are even some teachers who have special needs themselves and they have decided uh, they want to stick into that line and be lecturers or even teachers for kids with special needs. Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. In addition to what my mentor and lecturer in the same field has uh, mentioned, mm -hmm. maybe I wish to also mention that KISE was established in 1986 mm -hmm. uh, on the 14th of February via legal notice number 17 mm -hmm. and was charged with uh, the, the, the 11 roles and functions. So in the KISE mandate we have 11 functions. He has mentioned quite a number. Co is the role of uh, training teachers and other practitioners who get out to support learners and persons with special needs and disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we are having a conference tomorrow and it's in line with one of our core mandates mm -hmm. where KISE is basically an assessment center. Mm -hmm. We run a national assessment center mm -hmm. uh, whose focus is on early identification assessment and intervention for learners with special needs education and perhaps to, to just uh, interject a bit you've talked about tomorrow you have a conference yeah. can you can touch on that because at least kenyans should know that because when you talk about conference kenyans perhaps may, may think it's something uh, uh, that uh, also is in line with the devolution conference that we have perhaps you can <laughs> <laughs> clear yeah, that thank you i'm aware of a devolution conference in makueni yes now ours is not a political uh, conference like mm -hmm. one uh, being hosted by our colleagues in Makueni. Mm -hmm. Ours is a, a national conference on special needs education. Mm -hmm. And this is not the first time KISA is uh, organizing for a, a, a conference. Mm -hmm. This is the third. In fact, we are referring to it as uh, the third KISA national conference on special needs education. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the first two are hosted by other institutions. We are the first at Kenya School of Monetary Studies. Mm -hmm. Then the second, I think that was in 2019, mm -hmm. we were hosted by the United States International University. 
Mm -hmm. Now then we didn't have the capacity to host it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But now we have an operational Kisa Hotel and mm -hmm. conference facilities. Mm -hmm. And starting with this conference, we are, we are going to host it ourselves and in fact invite other uh, organizations that may organize their conferences to also come and use the Kisa facilities. Mm -hmm. Now in line with the same conference, mm -hmm. I said we are having one commencing tomorrow. Ours is purely on matters, special needs education. Mm -hmm. And the theme of uh, our conference this time mm -hmm. is functional assessment, uh, enhancing access to quality services for every child and youth. Mm -hmm. uh, functional assessment, mm -hmm. enhancing quality, enhancing access to quality services and um, quality services for every child and youth. Mm -hmm. So it, it is already in the, in the public domain. Mm -hmm. It is already shared in our KISA platforms. And we have participants are registering online to join us. Mm -hmm. Those from the diaspora are already jetting in. We've mm -hmm. received quite a number, mm -hmm. but a majority will be with us from tomorrow, the earliest hour, for this two-day two, uh, two day conference. Yeah, via Zoom, of course. There are some people who are going to join via Zoom. Yeah, well. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, our website has provisions for people who will opt to follow the proceedings of the, con the conference online, mm -hmm. uh, while others will come in physically. We are mm -hmm. working with a number of 250 attending physically, mm -hmm. and... Uh, another limitless number mm -hmm. can follow the proceedings of the conference through the website okay yeah. and and we will get uh, to the details of the conference perhaps to uh, to expound on uh, some of the mandates There's, you held a couple of weeks ago you held a, a workshop um, an ICT integration uh, workshop yes. uh, kindly tell us about that and how you've been able to integrate that before we go to the CBC yes we have uh we have to ensure that all children with, with special needs, and particularly I, had, I say special needs because others have been taken care of across the years, mm -hmm. but children with special needs have always been left out. Mm -hmm. they have, like we say they've been marginalized. Mm -hmm. We have to bring them on board, and this is by ensuring that they have digital literacy. Mm -hmm. They are working with the current. We have to make them 21st century learners. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 we had the, the, the workshop, and uh, the, the idea here was to train teachers on how to integrate digital literacy in, their, in, the, in the, the conduction of lessons on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. How can they bring in digital literacy in their lessons? Mm -hmm. And this was the main concern. We exposed them to, to the, the available uh, uh, devices mm -hmm. and, and uh, they were able to see how to, to use these devices uh, in, the, in the classes, and particularly we talked about for the visual impaired, I remember very well we talked about the Orbit Reader 20, a mm -hmm. device that has been distributed by the Kilimanjaro Blind Trust mm -hmm. to the schools, and uh, it is their turning tables. Mm -hmm. That the device is turning tables for the blind, mm -hmm. because they are able to access books, they are able to access all kinds of learning materials mm -hmm. through that gadget, which is also wi working with the refreshable braille. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, being the head of department, if we, we have had CBC, of course, which was quite different from what we used to have, the mm. education system that we used to have, the, mm. uh, the 844 system. Mm. Now, when it comes to Kenya Institute of Special Education, were well, there are a lot of changes because, of course, Kenya Institute of Special Education uh, is not quite exa exactly the, 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 the mirror image of other education systems. Mm. Did you have any challenges and how are you able to integrate mm. the CBC curriculum in special education? Thank you, thank you. That's a, that's a good question because first of all we look at what does, when we talk of training, what, how, how, what content does KISA give to its teacher, to the to teacher trainees? Mm -hmm. One, KISA trains teachers who have already been trained. In, in other words, we are training teachers. We are not training okay, okay. students from, from high schools or uh -huh. elsewhere. Yes. We are training trained teachers, mm -hmm. upgrading them mm -hmm. into a di diploma level. <coughs> it's not the dipro diploma that matters here. Mm -hmm. It is the kind of content. We have to ensure that every of our students, teachers, mm -hmm. undergo some kind of psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. So that a teacher for the blind is able to see the world with the eyes of the blind. Okay. A teacher for the deaf is able to hear the world with the ears of the deaf. Okay. How does that happen? We have to, the teacher must understand the client, mm -hmm. must understand the, the way the client learns, mm -hmm. the limitations that, he, uh, that are imposed by the, the, that disability, mm -hmm. 
uh, considering that hearing and uh, seeing are basically the, 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 the channels, sensory channels through which a learner receives information from the world. Mm -hmm. So the, the teacher must understand. Before he goes to the class, through the class, he must understand that. Therefore, now CBC mm -hmm. is emphasizing the competence. And our training was more focused on enabling authenticity in the kind of content we are giving. Mm -hmm. bringing, bringing experiences, coming with resources that are real. For example, blind learn better by doing. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just give stories to the, to the, to the learner. Mm -hmm. You must bring the world to him. Because, for example, if you talk about a cow, what, what picture develops in the blind child's mind? He has never seen a cow. So you must bring a cow or a, a model of a cow to the learner before you talk about that. So that kind of change, so that whenever you are talking about anything, when you, are, you say, look, look here, where, according to the blind, where, so you must make sure that you actualize, you make it authentic, you make it real, so that he understands what you are teaching. So this is the kind of training we give our, we give our, our, our students. And CBC is talking of, talking of learning experiences that are relevant, that are real, creating experiences. In short, is actually make things better yeah, as yeah, opposed real. to the way so things were. You, you move away from uh, from uh, abstractness yes. to real to, to reality. Mm -hmm. So that the teachers must the teacher must sit down to think of how to present certain content mm -hmm. so that the learner gets it. And therefore, CBC is, is coming to is coming to to, to, to to lift learners with special needs towards successful inclusion mm -hmm. and uh, understanding the concepts and the approaches in CBC. Because I'm also a CBC trainer, mm -hmm. therefore it, it is coming to bring the learner with special needs on board. It is coming to make learning real. Mm -hmm. So it's actually made things better, and perhaps you, because you you deal with the stu the students themselves, um, yeah. uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Yeah. It came at a time when, of course, nobody expected, and it disrupted even the education system. Of yeah. course, Kenya, we know how it impacted. How did it impact? Uh, Kise, and how how are you able to overcome the challenge? Thank you. I must admit that uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Mm -hmm tampered with our calendar as Kise. But again, we had to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. We chose to offer our training courses online, mm -hmm. a system that uh, even enabled us to graduate some students last week on Friday. Mm -hmm. Students who would otherwise have been forced mm -hmm. to wait until maybe normalcy returns for them to be, to be able to attend uh, the sessions physically. Mm -hmm. But because of the online mode we chose, quite a number benefited mm -hmm. and were, were graduated last uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you've talked about a conference to ensure that a lot that and of course the milestone that you've been able to achieve and the integration of uh, a number of things including technology mm. um, what is your end game what do you want to achieve during this uh, you've this two days conference it's a two day conference yes. maybe I wish to take you back because I remember you, you inquired about the programs that KISA offers yes and I remember bringing in the, the aspect of the conference mm -hmm at that point yes but let me take you back a little mm -hmm. that uh kise by mandate uh, is a teacher training institution mm -hmm. but but like i said at the beginning we have 11 other roles to perform mm -hmm. and so presently at the moment other than the training aspect we, we have uh, other courses that we offer within the institute we do rehabilitation of persons mm -hmm. who acquire disabilities later in life Okay. Like you, you agree with me that a disability can uh, can come in at any any point in life. Yes, we are all candidates. We are all, candidates. all of us are candidates. Yes. Yeah. If not because of accidents, then age will also get us there. Because mm -hmm. whatever we are able to do today, you may not be able to do it as well tomorrow. Mm. Reason being age. Eh? Yes. We talk about presbyopia mm. in in our family over mm. the visual impaired. That once you are forty, then your vision b begins to deteriorate. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The deaf will also talk about. Uh, Press by mm -hmm. Yeah, because even the hearing levels will uh, deteriorate mm -hmm. with the age. So we are only candidates the way you put it. Mm -hmm. And so we have a program called uh, Rehabilitation, mm -hmm. where persons who, who become uh, visually impaired later in life, they acquire it. Mm -hmm. Those who acquire physical uh, impairments, those who acquire hearing 
uh, problems, those who acquire speech and language problems. We have programs within the case where we admit such students mm -hmm. and take them through, through some training so that they are able to cope with the, the, their disabilities. Mm -hmm. Then additionally, uh, KISA offers a certificate courses, uh, which we refer to as short courses, mm -hmm. courses in Kenyan Sign Language, courses in Elementary Sign Language. We offer courses in uh, various areas of specialization, like a certificate in inclusive education, mm -hmm. where people from all levels of education can come to KISA to pursue the certificate course to be able to support the learners in their workplaces. Mm -hmm. We also offer certificate course in what we call functional assessment. And that's ideally the focus of this year's conference where we are discussing functional assessment and its place in the CBC curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have uh, that short course where people, where students come in for one year to pursue a certificate course leading to the award of a certificate in functional assessment. Mm -hmm. We also offer certificate course in braille proficiency where we polish on the skills that our stu students may have gathered through training so that they, they are proficient in braille reading and writing and also able to service the braille machines because mm -hmm. we, we realize that uh, at the moment that's quite technical not so many practitioners yes. like um, quite a number of us are able to write and read braille mm -hmm. but now the aspect of uh, dismantling and assembling the braille machine uh -huh. quite it's a challenging field, mm -hmm. and so we adopted it as part of the curriculum so that, uh, that the people who go through the Braille proficiency course can also be competent enough mm -hmm. when it comes to servicing and repairing the Braille machines. Mm -hmm. um, then back to the conference, mm -hmm. like I said, our theme is about functional assessment, and the sub-themes are quite a number. Mm -hmm. And um, we sort papers in each of the sub-themes, and I'm happy to report to you that quite a number of papers have been received at the moment. And we look forward to a fruitful engagement during the conference mm -hmm. starting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some theme areas. One was about uh, assessment tools, materials, and equipment. Mm -hmm. We want to find out from educationists and researchers the kind of tools that we need to use maybe for assessment this 21st century. And because, of course, everything is changing now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are moving from analog to digital in to many di aspects. To digital? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Then uh, the, the second uh, uh, sub theme. It's about skills development and competency of the assessor. We want to find out whether the assessors we have with the assessment centers at the sub-county level are the 21st century assessors. Because we could be uh, banking on assessors whose skills date back in the 1986 when KISE uh, started. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the, the third uh, sub-theme is about uh, resourcing for assessment. We have quite a number of papers on resourcing for assessment. Mm -hmm. Another sub-theme is about um, assessment approaches, uh, the role of stakeholders in functional assessment, then technology and functional assessment is another sub-theme. Mm -hmm. Then they f finally we have the role of research, policy and media in functional assessment. Mm -hmm. Those are the sub-theme areas. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, in Kenya, uh, perhaps John you can uh, yes. uh, chip in with this. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, I can say we have a glut of teachers where you find that um, the, the teacher service uh, commission. There are so many teachers, but they, there's just a number that they can be able to accommodate at each and any one given point. Mm -hmm. Do you experience the same, where you have so many uh, special education teachers, but mm -hmm. the institutions are not able to accommodate all of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the situation. We have so many trained teachers out there. Special education teachers. Even, in, even with skills, we have trained very many teachers who have not been absorbed mm -hmm. by the Teacher Service Commission. Mm -hmm. And I, I would compare it with a situation where you have a lot of food in the granary, mm -hmm. but you go to the kitchen, the food is not enough for the children. Mm -hmm. So we, we, have, we, we know we have so many children out there, even in, uh, in integrated programs where the teachers are not absorbed enough. Mm -hmm. They are out there, but they are not enough. Mm -hmm. But the government is doing everything possible, I know, mm -hmm. to ensure that. Uh, and particularly for, 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 for the government programs, and particularly CBC to succeed, mm -hmm. we need teachers in the schools. Mm -hmm. And I know government is doing everything possible. Mm -hmm. We have seen day, time after time the, the, the Teacher Service Commission indicating that they will employ a certain number of teachers, mm -hmm. and I know we are moving towards that direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, talking about um, uh, institutions, how many 
special education institutions do we have? At least we are talking about, yes, we even have teachers who have not been absorbed, who, ha who are special education teachers. Do we, how many institutions? Do we have each and every county enough uh, institutions to cater for children with special education or special needs? No, no. I would say no, because not every county mm -hmm. has, has programs for all categories of learners with special needs. However, the government is insisting on inclusion. Mm -hmm. And teacher, uh, Akise, is training so many teachers for regular schools, whether there are children with special needs or not, so that any time a learner with a, spe a, spe a special need joins a school, he finds a teacher already in that school. Mm -hmm. However, that does not mean that all the teachers with special needs have been absor absorbed. Been absorbed. The, qu the, qu the question you ask is how many? Mm -hmm. At, at the moment, um, I may not give an ex a specific number mm -hmm. because every new 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 oh, day yeah. we have every a, cycle we have a we school have for the blind coming mm -hmm. up. For example, we have school for the children mm -hmm. with mental challenges coming up. Mm -hmm. The number is increasing at a, at a, at a high rate. Mm -hmm. So so the programs are coming up and up. And we are saying, although the government is in, uh, insisting on inclusion, mm -hmm. we are not saying that special schools be done away with. Mm -hmm. They will provide services to the profound cases. Mm -hmm. There are those children whose needs may not fit. Uh, a regular school, an yeah. inclusive setting, uh -huh. and the such services may only be available in a specialized kind of environment pro pro program. Indeed, and uh, we talk about uh, pa partnership. Of course, we have partnered with uh, various institutions, and of course, there are other non-governmental institutions that you partner with, or from other countries. You will uh, uh, address that. But before then, are there any adjustments that you had to do? Because at least you talk about. Uh, kids with special needs, more or less, it was more or less like CBC, even before CBC came mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Are there any adjustments that you had to do so that the former curriculum mm -hmm. conforms with the CBC that you have right now, that we are using all of us? Yes, as we, you see, it is transition. Yes. You're coming from the old, uh, the, 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 the content-based curriculum mm -hmm. to a competence-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we are undergoing transition because CBC is up to grade five now. Mm -hmm. Next year, we are going to grade 6. Mm -hmm. The old program, the old program say 844, is also on. So in the school, mm -hmm. we have two, 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 two kinds of teachers. We have to, okay, all these teachers we are trained through the, 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 the content-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we are taking them through training every mm -hmm. holiday. And I'm actively participating in that. Mm -hmm. Training teachers within the counties every holiday. So that, by the, by, uh, for example, now we are going to train for grade six. So that as the children transit, they are they are prepared. So adjustments are being made in terms of uh, in terms of uh, approaches. Even to those teachers in grade six or seven, they must see understand what is going on down there, so they can try to use the CBS approaches mm -hmm. to improve delivery. Mm -hmm. So that uh, when when the when the, 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 next, the next group, the next level, the next grade comes they will just make a slight adjustment because they understand what has been going on. As uh, the training has been going on, there are discussions within the school because once you train a teacher, he does not go to cover the lamp. Mm -hmm. he, discusses it, he discusses in the staff room so that by the time that, that, that grade comes to the next level already, that transition is going on. And it is becoming quite smooth. Yeah. Everybody is adopting this. It's a smooth transition it's, so far. It, it is taking us to the right to direction. As opposed to what, I, what used to be there. Yes. The, okay, people will talk. Yes. People will talk, but it is smooth. And we are moving, and we are headed. I'm, I'm seeing a child, a 21st century child, 30 years to come, my granddaughter, my grandson, mm -hmm. will be a completely different blend from the current. Okay, uh, and, and Gabriel, maybe, yes, you can add on in that. In addition to what my senior has said, mm -hmm. is um, you, you look at the KISE curriculum and we imagine that it is CBC borrowing from KISE mm -hmm. and not the other way around. Because what KISE has been doing all along has been CBC, but, but maybe the only new thing is the name CBC. Because mm -hmm. in KISE we focus on uh, the, the individual child, because mm -hmm. our focus is about the individualized education program. It's what we emphasize throughout our training from the time mm -hmm. KISE uh, mm -hmm. was established. Mm -hmm. And we are also seeing CBC talk about the, the, the talent. Uh, assess the child, uh, discover their talent, and nurture that talent. 
and that's what KISA has been emphasizing in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. So what we didn't have was the name CBC, but KISA has had all the programs that we are seeing, CBC Mount. Mm -hmm. No wonder most of the trainers, like my senior here, mm -hmm. most of the CBC trainers are personnel working with us in KISA because we, we, we've had it for quite some time. Mm -hmm. The only thing we are now adopting and accepting is CBC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, your earlier question was about uh, the, the friends of KISA. Yeah, partnership, because uh, yeah. looking at KISA is a government institution, mm. but you partner with other institutions mm. right here in Kenya and even abroad. Yeah. Yes. Wide and wide enough. Mm -hmm. We have an able officer in charge of partnerships in the institute. Mm. I, I wish I came with her. She would take like a, a full hour talking about the friends of KISA. But maybe in, in the light of the forthcoming conference, mm -hmm. We've partnered with quite a number of our friends. Uh, maybe I'll mention a few, but without forgetting the media council, because we are here courtesy of uh, <laughs> the, the media council, mm -hmm. to make it known that we shall have a conference tomorrow, because were it not for you, mm -hmm. then our message to the public about our conference would not have gone out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we are partnering with uh, UNICEF, which has uh, done a lot for KISE. I'm also aware of uh, a workshop, so some in-service course that KISE mounted, to all the EAC assessors across the country, a program that ended in the month of October, because we had all the EAC assessors from all the corners of this country. Mm -hmm. that they were invited to KISA in small groups of 50. I think the cohorts were five, mm -hmm. and each had like 50 officers from the sub-counties and county level. Mm -hmm. And we discussed a lot about functional assessment. Mm -hmm. And I'm now seeing this uh, theme resonate very well with the just concluded induction for our EAC officers, because mm -hmm. it was about strengthening EAC services. And here we now have a theme saying functional assessment. I see if we still want the same people to come tell us mm -hmm. what they are doing in the field and what we can do so that we, we become the assessors of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, so UNICEF played a role during that uh, pre-service training, mm -hmm. whatever it is, the, the in-service course for the EAC officers who came from all corners of this country. Mm -hmm. We have uh, KCB, Kenya Commercial Bank. Mm -hmm. We have the National Bank of Kenya and quite a number of friends of KISA because if I go listing all of them I'm talking about the, the, the how do you partner with them in terms of what in terms of uh, uh, we've mentioned a couple of banks so mm. in that I'm quite sure that's in terms of financial mm. uh, <laughs> uh, or about yeah. in terms of education in terms of education because I look at UNICEF as having partnered with us mm -hmm. in terms of education by organizing that we we are able to train our EAC officers mm -hmm. yeah maybe I can also mm -hmm. come in and talk of the National Council for persons with the disabilities we are mm -hmm. doing work doing a lot in terms of training uh, with them mm -hmm. we have sight savers international mm -hmm. we have been working together towards education for the visually impaired and the deaf blind mm -hmm. We partner with Parkins International in terms of the deaf blind blindness. We partner with uh, with actually so many of them, mm -hmm. so many, including so many our own employers, mm -hmm. the teacher service commission, mm -hmm. the ministry. They are yeah. all our partners. Are okay. yeah. Those are all the partners that uh, are, are helping you actualize the education in Kise. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges? Because of course, uh, being a government-funded institution and a learning institution, of course, there must be some challenges that you experience. And how do you overcome them? Well, yeah, I would say one of the greatest challenges as an institution for, as the only, the mother institution that is dealing with, the, with the learners with special needs is how can we access our, how can all children in this country access our services? Here, we engage the Minister of Education and ourselves, we are ready to network in search of these children so that our services will get to them mm -hmm. that's one one of the challenges and we are working we already folk, we see it and we are working with uh, with our partners towards that mm -hmm. uh, we have our, 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 our teachers mm -hmm. how can we ensure that all teachers we train are deployed to programs at least so are that, absorbed. Yes, are absorbed to the programs mm -hmm. so that the, the, the hot skills mm -hmm. that they, they, they graduate with are going directly to the learner. Mm -hmm. Here, we are in and we are talking closely with our, with, our, with our employers, the Teacher Service Commission and the Ministry of Education, to make sure that these teachers do not go to, 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 to programs where they are not using those skills. Yeah. It, will be, it will be better when they go directly to serve the child. Yes. The government is spending a lot of money on this and it is important that the services go back 
straight back. And looking at the statistics of the number of children with special needs, vis-a-vis -vis the number of learning institutions that we have, perhaps under, under, after you've already uh, deployed your teachers, yeah. are they enough? Looking at the number of dis dis disabled children that we have, or uh, looking at the special needs the that. teachers are not enough. The teachers are not enough. They are not enough. And the institutions themselves, are they? And the, the, and the, the institutions, uh, we cannot say they are enough because more and more children are being identified. Mm -hmm. And uh, placement is still an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And perhaps in your conference, Kenya, just, as, just like other African countries, we have one problem of hiding uh, people and even children who need who have special needs or who are disabled mm -hmm. uh, is it something that is in the menu um the role of the parent in the community mm -hmm. because at the end of the day I being an institution i'm mm -hmm. quite sure you're just not going to sit around you know that is a problem that we have yeah. and we are an institution that deals with special education mm -hmm. I'm quite sure it's just don't just that, uh, that has been the practice uh, not only in Kenya but I think world over mm -hmm. that uh, the birth of a child with disabilities in a family mm -hmm. is looked at as a curse and many families will uh, hide this child others will literally kill the child just to save the family or from the embarrassment that is associated with disabilities mm -hmm. um, and uh, like I mentioned at the beginning assessment functional assessment begins with the identification mm -hmm. but before that assessor in the field is able to assess a child then this child must be identified and so the family the, the parents and the community at large has a role to play during the initial identification and then from that point then the EAC officers can come in do the assessment do the intervention and do the placement mm -hmm. but the practice of hiding these children and not bringing them out to be supported is there mm -hmm. but you are fighting it maybe through parental sensitization mm -hmm. and maybe in line with our conference mm -hmm. now that the conference will also have a parallel parents workshop yes we invited quite a number of parents who will also be doing their workshop alongside the conference we want to also get their views about what should be done about uh, the disabled if possible at the end of uh, their workshop mm -hmm. they, they can form a, a, some support group then th through the support group they can reach out to many other parents so that uh, we try to fight the idea of children being hidden just on the basis of them having some disability. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed, I, I grew up near uh, an institution, a special education institution, and I know the challenges that, of course, comes with, uh, with everything, from the institution to mm -hmm. the, the, pa the parents themselves, mm -hmm. to, the, to the kids themselves. Mm -hmm. But I look at devolution mm -hmm. as an answer to some of the questions that we've been asking. Like now, you've talked about, you've put it very, very clear that we don't have enough institutions uh, have you thought about perhaps an institution partnering with the county government? Could that perhaps help to alleviate some of the pains that uh, we are experiencing and the challenges that uh, we are experiencing in dealing with kids with special needs? Yes. Though education has not been devolved, yes. the county government has have a big role to play because the children at the end of the day belong to that county and they have a right to every share that comes to the county. I know it is in the interest of the government to establish all the education facilities within different counties that will meet the needs of, of every learner. Mm -hmm. However, the counties, the, 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 the county governments need to support the IAC officers mm -hmm. so that all the children are identified and there will be no more hiding of these children because they are still being hidden. Mm -hmm. The, a lot of sensitization needs to be conducted. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, it would be good if I saw, if I saw these, uh, these caravans mm -hmm. following, going around the villages, talking about SNE, as we do it during campaigns. Mm -hmm. I wish we can conduct such a campaign. Yes, and indeed I concur because I've worked with KEDIPA, the yes. Kenya Disability Parliamentarian Association, yes. which really tries to advocate in yeah. terms of legislation because mm -hmm. those are the, the MPs, the, the likes of Akina Wanyonyi, the mm -hmm. likes of Akina mm -hmm. Senator mm -hmm. uh, Musurve. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that could also, could. Could also add because yeah. at the end of the day we have, if we have good legislation when yes. it comes to, to, to special mm -hmm. education and special needs, mm -hmm. 
that could go a long way in yeah. alleviating some of the baggage that yeah. uh, we have in the country. Such an is initiative mm -hmm. will do very well if we give support to the parents. Mm -hmm. If parents know that they'll get the necessary support, yes. they will bring out the children. Mm -hmm. But if they know you're only identifying and then leaving them, mm -hmm. then they would rather stay back with their children. Mm -hmm. But if they knew that the moment I take my child there, the child will be supported this way and that way. Mm -hmm. They will bring them out. I wish we can go around. Indeed. Shouting at the top of our, of our voices. Gabriel, perhaps you can add on that and uh, your final remarks, uh, and especially when it comes to the conference, because you seem to be so hands-on when it comes to tomorrow's uh, conference. We expect a yeah, very good conference. I am a member of the technical committee uh -huh. organizing the conference, and that's where you see my answers are biased. Yeah. It's like you, you, you pull me the other way, yes. I, I get you, you go back. back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I want to, to, to make an addition to what my senior has said about the, the role of the county governments. Because mm -hmm. for quite some time, everyone has looked at Kise as a, a primary teacher's college. One that prepares teachers who go out to, to serve learners with special needs mm -hmm. who are at the primary cycle. Maybe from grade one to, to, to standard eight. We, we, we are trying to come out of it so that we, we can have it begin at preschool level. Because mm -hmm. I'm aware that um, preschool education is a, a county function. Because the county yes. governments are, are in charge of preschool education. Mm -hmm. Then we also want to go beyond to secondary school and even post secondary school level so that we are able to, to assess and do the right placement and transition, even for youth and adults with special needs. Because uh, maybe the times you were born, we didn't have these assessment centers. And so you may, you may have missed a, an important link in your life. Mm -hmm. So even if we, we did it later in life, we can still. Um, place you where, where, wherever you belong so that you can optimally function uh, as a Kenyan. Um, so d during our recent uh, workshop where we had the EAC officers, we talked about uh, the, the role of the county governments. And I think w we might come up with a write-up also requesting them to embrace special education so that we, we can do the identification mm -hmm. at preschool level mm -hmm. and then let there be some department within the county setup that, that uh, addresses SNE, special needs education, so that uh, after identification mm -hmm. of that child who is of preschool age, mm -hmm. we have an officer in charge who will also see to it that uh, we have uh, sufficient staff with the training in SNE, maybe deployed to our ECD center so that intervention and support begins at, the, at that level. Mm -hmm. um, our conference, mm -hmm. yeah, like I did mention earlier, we are receiving uh, visitors, delegates from all over the world. This morning I've seen a few jet in from Zambia we are expecting quite a number from other uh, countries, uh, Tanzania, Uganda, mm -hmm. Rwanda, and so on, mm -hmm. in addition to our local delegates, mm -hmm. whom we are we're not also looking out. Mm -hmm. So we, we are looking forward to hosting about 250 delegates physically mm -hmm. at the KISA conference. And I said the number that will follow online is limitless because mm -hmm. it's open. Mm -hmm. So my appeal to the general public is that uh, we all join the conference by logging into the, the Kise website, okay. which is www.kise.ac.ke, mm -hmm. and the second one is mkutano.kise.ac.ke, so okay. that they can register and, and, and make a choice, make a choice either to follow the proceedings okay. online or to attend physically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. John, Thank final you. words. Thank you. First of all, is to welcome all of us to to the conference. It's, it's a conference that is going to open, open our minds and we focus on what is going on on the ground in, the, in our country and this will help us to plan the, the way forward. Uh, SNE is an area that needs all our support. We have to agree that all learners' potentials must be identified, potentials must be nurtured so that we can lead every learner towards success because every learner is successful. It's only that we succeed at different levels. And the CBC has, is not bringing about a concept, comp concept of, uh, of competition. Mm -hmm. Every learner is competing within self. Yes. So we bring out the best in every child. From, uh, from content based to curriculum to, to, based. to competency. Indeed. Yeah, to Con thank content you. to competency. Based. Thank you so much. Uh, I have been speaking with two gentlemen who are from the Kenya Institute of Special Education. We had John Muga, who is the head of department uh, at Kise uh, when it comes to matters uh, visual mm -hmm. impairment, uh, and of course, uh, lecturer uh, Gabriel Malala. 
who is a lecturer at the institution and also part of the committee that is organizing the two-day conference. And of course, if you want to know more, you just go to the KISE website so that you may be part of the conversation. And that is the end of uh, a news check this morning. Thank you so much for joining me from uh, 10 a.m. Uh, till now. Of course, I'm giving way to the Kiswahili department now, of course, for uh, Tamrini and, of course, Kurunzi Mashinani. Thank you so much for watching. As I always say, let's continue this conversation on social media. My name is Bentro Njue and uh, uh, Susan Thuku he has been a sign language interpreter for this live cast. Thank you for watching. Thank you, gentlemen.